Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at the combustion of fuels. Now fuels are mainly um, short chain hydrocarbons um, and they're normally found from crude oil, so the vast majority of fuels are that we use. Uh, and obviously we know that crude oil is a finite resource and it's rapidly running out. Um, but when we burn a fuel, um, it can actually produce some bad uh, pollutants as well. And in this video we're going to look at um, the different kind of parts of a fuel. So, for example, when we burn it, we have complete. We're going to look at the incomplete version as well. We're going to look at some of the other pollutants that we can produce when we burn a fuel. Uh, we're going to look at how we can prevent that and what things we can do to try and remove these uh, really bad um, pollutants. Uh, and also looking into the future, uh, what fuels are we actually, uh, well, should we use in the future to try and reduce our um, environmental impact. Um, and actually, you'll probably know that we're going to have a, just a quick look at electric cars as well, uh, especially as you've seen a few more of them uh, driving around on the road today in the UK. So we're going to start with um, the complete combustion. Now, for example, purposes, you are expected to know the equations um, relating to complete combustion. So when you can burn a fuel completely, um, you produce carbon dioxide and water, and you always produce them to uh, products. So in this case, I've got a specific example here, um, which is propane. Now, propane is normally what you'd probably use on when you go camping, so like camping gas. Um, you could use it for patio heaters as well, etc. So it's normally a gas at room temperature, but you can put it into a, um, a container and you can liquefy it under pressure and you can use it as a fuel. So actually, when we take propane, uh, we, if we burn it completely, we'll always produce carbon dioxide and water. And it is very important that you're able to balance these equations as well. And you can see here that if we need, for this to burn completely, we need five molecules of oxygen for every one molecule of propane that we need. Um, and if we have that minimum amount of oxygen, then we will burn our fuel completely. And if we don't, then actually what will happen is we'll produce um, a, other products which are incomplete combustion. Now, it is incredibly rare, if not impossible, um, naturally to actually burn a fuel 100% completely, and you will produce um, some incomplete combustion as well. That's inevitable. Um, but it's about trying to manage this incomplete combustion and making sure that we can either turn it into something less harmful uh, or that we can get rid of it um, in a safe way. So this is when we burn a fuel, and I've actually taken the same uh, hydrocarbon so we can compare the two, and I can show you. So incomplete combustion is where we don't have sufficient amount of oxygen for the fuel to burn. Um, so this is where we've got a slight deficiency. So you can see here we've got the same fuel, which is propane. Now if we burn propane um, with a limited amount of oxygen, then we can produce um, two products. Uh, carbon monoxide, which is toxic. Um, you can't see it, you can't smell it, um, but it can kill you and it's lethal. Um, and carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas, and we can also produce carbon particulates. Now, this is also known as soot, uh, and soot actually is the substance that makes um, the windows dirty on buildings or um, objects around the place dirty. And also, um, it's not good for um, breathing as well, particularly if you're an asthmatic. Uh, breathing in things like carbon particulates can actually adjust for your asthma. Um, but you can see, in terms of the chemical equation, and when, you're, when you actually burn this incompletely, if you're producing carbon monoxide, you can see that we actually don't have enough oxygen. We only have three and a half molecules of oxygen, and that's the minimum amount that we need to produce carbon monoxide. So if we get between three and a half and five of uh, molecules of oxygen per molecule of propane, then actually what we will produce is some carbon monoxide as well. And if we actually get to a stage where we have um, no more than two molecules of oxygen per molecule of propane, then we will actually produce soot. Um, and soot um, is obviously just carbon, just pure carbon. It's black, um, but we always produce water in both of these reactions as well. But you can see that um, both of these are, um, are actually not very nice, but they are, they are existent when we burn any fuel. Um, and it just depends on the level of oxygen. And obviously, the more oxygen you can get in there, the less carbon monoxide and soot you'll actually produce. So if we look at the other pollutants as well, and I'm approaching this from a, a viewpoint of a car or a lorry or some kind of vehicle that uses petrol. So um, if, we use a, um, if we use a petrol uh, fuel, so for example, it might be something like heptane or octane, and um, when we burn that, we actually um, produce loads of other pollutants. And one of them could be nitrates or NOx. And NOx actually represents 
nitrogen monoxide, uh, nitrogen dioxide, uh, and another nitrogen oxide, which is N2O4. Um, so NOx is like a generic term. Now, nitrates are actually formed when we take nitrogen, which is um, a large amount of it is got in the air, uh, about 78% of the air is nitrogen, uh, and when that reacts with oxygen in the engine, in the engine cavity, in the car, um, the amount of heat that's actually in the car engine allows nitrogen and oxygen to react. And when they react, they produce nitrogen oxide. Uh, and the biggest problem with nitrogen oxide is actually um, they can react with water in the atmosphere to form nitric acid. Uh, nitric acid is one of the uh, contributors to acidic rain, which can damage buildings and statues, etc. Um, and also nit nitrogen um, monoxide isn't very good if you breathe it in, but if you have water in your respiratory, in your, um, respiratory airways, um, then uh, actually um, that can produce um, acidic gases or acidic solutions in your throat, uh, and you can have severe sore throats as well. Um, another production is sulfur dioxide. Now, sulfur doesn't exist in the air like nitrogen does, but sulfur is actually an impurity in fuels. Um, so when you dig out your crude oil, um, you will have sulfur that's actually mixed in there as well. And when you burn the fuel, obviously the sulfur will burn as well, react with the oxygen because um, we're combusting it, and it will form sulfur dioxide. Now, if there's enough oxygen there, the sulfur dioxide will react with oxygen to form a gas called sulfur trioxide. Um, and your sulfur trioxide, if it comes into contact with water, will make sulfuric acid. And you are expected to know these equations as well here, um, which show how sulfuric acid is made. Uh, obviously, sulfuric acid, like nitric acid, is acidic, uh, and it's another contributor to, ac uh, to acid rain. Um, you can also get unburnt hydrocarbons as well. So coming out of the exhaust of a car or a vehicle, um, you can get fuels that haven't been burnt. Um, and again, these can uh, create something called photochemical smog, which gives this, this haze in the atmosphere. Not very good if you suffer from asthma again. Um, it's not the best thing, um, and actually um, a lot of these unburned hydrocarbons are actually really bad um, uh, greenhouse gases, and greenhouse gases are uh, one of the, um, could be one of the causes of global warming, uh, which is uh, causing the ice caps to melt and the sea temperatures to rise. So unburned hydrocarbons can cause a bit of a problem, so for example methane, etc. And um, obviously we've looked at carbon as well, but these are carbon particulates, car carbon particulates, they can actually um, exacerbate asthma, uh, they can cause cancer as well um, in the lungs, so lung cancer. Um, they also obviously create dirty windows on buildings and make objects outside dirty, so this is not very good either. Um, another one is ozone. Now you might be surprised with ozone. Ozone is very useful in the, right in the outer atmosphere uh, because it actually blocks harmful UV rays from the sun from hitting us uh, and causing us to be radiated with harmful UV. But at lower levels, um, actually, ozone is really bad for asthma, um, and it irritates people's respiratory systems as well, even if you don't suffer from asthma. Uh, and ozone is actually created from hydrocarbons that have been unburnt, and nitrates as well. Um, you don't need to know the reactions for these, but you are expected to know how ozone could be made. And um, Two of the products as well, actually, which are produced from complete combustion, because you might think, well, that's, that's ultimately what we want, but carbon dioxide and water, both of these are greenhouse gases. Uh, and both of them will actually warm up the atmosphere. Uh, you might think water is a bit unusual. Water being, obviously, we drink it, we need it. You might not see it as harmful, but actually water is. And one of the best examples of, to prove that water is a greenhouse gas is that, especially on a, on a winter, um, when it's really cloudy at night, actually the temperatures on the Earth um, stays relatively warm. And when it's really clear sky in the winter, you feel that the temperature drops quite a lot because the water in the atmosphere isn't there. We don't have that cloud cover to keep us warm at night when, when the, um, the heat is being radiated away from the Earth. So um, both of these are greenhouse gases, and we, um, we've got to um, recognize them as, as them as well. Um, we can do something about it, though. We can uh, remove sulfur and catalytic converters. Um, and we can use it, um, we can use, for example, the removal of sulfur. Um, sulfur is normally formed from burning of fuel, in particular things like coal. Coal contains a large amount of sulfur and it's, it's quite a, a dirty fuel with it being a very long, long chain hydrocarbons inside them. And they're very difficult to burn completely. So in particular, as soon as though the majority of the UK's power stations are coal fired, um, we do have to have um, what we call scrubbers and um, desulfurization in the chimney stacks. 
And basically, these contain calcium oxide or calcium carbonate, which is just limestone, uh, and they react with the um, the sulfates or the sulfur um, the sulfate gases that actually come out of the atmosphere, and they form calcium sulfate, which is effectively preventing it from going into the into the atmosphere. Um, also, just looking at back to car engines again, um, cars actually have a catalytic converter inside them. They're normally platinum-based uh, catalysts, so very precious metal, very expensive. But the catalyst is mounted on a uh, on like a, a mesh to give it a large surface area, and that large surface area means that you get a good uh, a good reaction um, between your um, harmful gases and the catalyst. So your catalyst will actually um, make carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide. They'll stick to the surface of the catalyst and they'll remain there. So we call that adsorption with a D, um, and it'll adsorb to the catalyst uh, and it will remain there until we have um, these two that are allowed to react together and they will produce nitrogen um, and carbon dioxide. Now, nitrogen and carbon dioxide, nitrogen is inert, it's not a greenhouse gas, it's naturally found in the atmosphere, so that's not bad. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, um, but it's a lot safer than carbon monoxide or nitrogen monoxide, which is um, poisonous and acidic, respectively. So um, there is another one as well where we take nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons um, and we can react these together as well. So these are unburnt hydrocarbons and again nitrogen oxides. And we can form nitrogen again, which again is a safer gas, carbon dioxide and water. But again, these two are not ideal because they're still greenhouse gases. Um, the final thing as well is um, obviously looking to the future. The government is trying to, um, most governments across the world are trying to uh, reduce their carbon emissions and trying to meet um, targets to try and reduce the environmental impact that we have. So um, we're encouraging um, some people to become carbon neutral. Uh, and this is basically means there's no net gain of carbon into the atmosphere. So um, in other words, that when we burn a fuel, we produce carbon dioxide. But there's things that we can do to try and reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we either put into the atmosphere or we can plant more trees and plants uh, and they can absorb carbon dioxide as well. Um, so for example, fuel from oil is, has a large carbon footprint. Um, oil's dug up from the ground, we burn it, um, but again, that's it. Um, all the carbon goes into the atmosphere um, and we just rely on the present trees that we have to actually grow it, whereas uh, to actually absorb it. Whereas if you take fuel from plants, so you might have something like bioethanol, where you take um, plant sugars or sugars and you can ferment them to make alcohol. Uh, you can burn that alcohol. So, um, and again, you'll produce carbon dioxide when you burn the alcohol because it's still a fuel. But because you've used plants, your source of that fuel has come from plants, which have absorbed carbon dioxide. And it's actually uh, a lot less of a carbon footprint compared to fuels from oil. Um, and you've got to be able to recognize that as well. And because the carbon, the plants absorb carbon dioxide in photosynthesis, um, if they actually use up the same amount of carbon dioxide as what you put um, into the atmosphere when you burn the fuel, you could actually say that this is officially carbon neutral. Um, you might think, um, especially in the UK, we're starting to see a lot of electric cars that are now driving around, and electric cars are normally seen as a green alternative to petrol, but you have got to be careful because electric cars are obviously powered by electricity. Uh, electricity is, is could be made from um, fuels which are actually really polluting. So, for example, like, like I said before, uh, coal power stations or gas power stations are actually quite harmful in terms of their emissions that they produce. Um, so the carbon might not come out straight directly from the car, but the uh, manufacturing of the electricity or the production of the electricity um, might have actually contributed a large amount of carbon dioxide as well. And it isn't really until um, you produce electricity either via wind or um, renewable ways that actually you could uh, you could have a truly um, carbon neutral um, vehicle. But you have just got to be aware of that um, and actually sometimes uh, things which may seem green and don't produce carbon dioxide immediately might actually do it indirectly through the fuel that they use. And you do need to know all of these and um, you do need to know the complete and incomplete combustion. You do need to know how these are made including the equations which I've written on there as well. Um, and uh, please make sure that you know um, the definition of carbon neutral as well. Um, if you get all that, um, you should be fine. A uh, good number of marks here, potentially in the exam. Uh, revise hard. That's it. Bye.